Hi, I'm Jeff Wober and welcome to another one of Smart Packager's online tutorials. Today we are going to cover custom actions. Uh, we're going to discuss what a custom action is, uh, what a post custom action from existing files can do, i.e. we're going to install Microsoft Project and then use a post custom action to automatically activate the product. Uh, we're going to launch VBS and PowerShell scripts, uh, show you how to accomplish that, and we're also going to use a uh, what I call a plan B. Uh, we're going to show you how to launch a silent install of a particular application, uh, which can be an alternative for actually discovering the product. Okay, let's get started. Let's open up the Smart Packager console. Once open, click on the Package Editor tab. Now, to define what a custom action is, a custom action is simply a way to run a process from an MSI. That process can run right before an install starts or just after an install completes. And the process can be a, an executable file, it could be a simple batch file, it could be a VBS script or even a PowerShell script. Uh, the first example I want to show you is running a post-install uh, custom action to activate project. Uh, the process is the same for most Microsoft applications. There's a file built into the package that can be run with a uh, command line perimeter uh, forward slash ACT to automatically activate Microsoft applications. It's this fantastic example of when to use a post process custom action. Uh, I'm going to right click on project, click on edit. This is going to open up the smart package editor. Uh, once it's open, go ahead and click on the custom action. From here, we can say add. Uh, I can add a new custom action. Is it going to be an executable or a batch file? Is it going to be a VBS script? In this case, I'm going to leave it as an executable. I'm going to press next and it's going to ask me about my file information. Is it an embedded file, i.e. is it compressed with the rest of the source files? Is, a, is it an installed file? Is it part of the existing source files that the package is going to copy down? Or is it going to be a new file that you're going to add to the package? Or is it going to be in an existing file, uh, something inside of the System32 folder, or somewhere that we can reference via a UNC path? Well, in this case, it's going to be an installed file, and it is an existing package file. I'm going to uh, hit this drop down, and uh, just give me a second to find it. The file that we're looking for is ospp.bbs, and it's at the root of the Office 12 folder. There's my root here, and then there is my OSPPBBS. It does have some command line perimeters. In this case, it is going to be forward slash ACT. Uh, I can press next at this point, and you can see my sequence is pretty much grayed out because since this is an installed file, my only option is to run it after the install. It obviously won't be there uh, before the install starts. The other option I have here is whether or not I want to wait for this action to complete. Uh, basically, if your custom action is going to reboot your machine, you do not want to have that, uh, you want to go ahead and uncheck that because we want to register it as a successful install. Uh, we don't want the MSI installer uh, hanging around waiting for a process to complete, which in reality never is going to complete. So, uh, for this example, I'm going to go ahead and leave it checked. Uh, we'll press next and then finish and you can see our custom action there. Uh, when I install this project MSI at this point, the very last thing it's going to do is launch that OSPP with the command line perimeters forward slash ACT and then automatically activate my application. The next example I want to show you is how to launch a VBS file. I have a VBS file that will prompt hello world. Very simple and uh, I'm going to create a MSI specifically for the purpose of launching this VBS file. Uh, to do that, I'm going to click on my welcome tab and I'm going to select create a new package. From here I'll say next and I'll give it a name, hello world. and my output folder, I'll leave that as the defaults. I'll press next and it's going to ask me if I want it to make it in 32-bit or 64-bit. I'm going to leave it as the defaults including the 32-bit. Uh, I'll press next again. It'll ask me if I want to create the MSI and add it to the workflow page or the editor page. I'm going to select the editor page and go ahead and check off open package for modification. I'll hit finish and my editor will pop right up. Uh, very similar from the last example, I'm going to click on custom actions and hit add, except this time I'm going to go ahead and run a VB script. 
uh, I'll press next and it'll ask me the same options. Is it an embedded file, an installed file, or an existing file? It's uh, going to be an installed file, but uh, since this package is empty, it's going to be a new package file. From here, I can select browse and uh, I can grab my hello world uh, VBS file. Uh, some different information that we have this time is installed location. By default, it's going to try to install it to where you selected it from the source files. Uh, you can hit uh, the drop down menu here. And uh, one of my favorite uh, folders to place these in, especially since they're temporary files, is the temp folder. So I'm going to place this directly into the temp folder and I'm going to say OK. Uh, so now when we install this package, it's going to copy Hello World VBS to the temporary folder and then run it as a after installer post install custom action. Uh, I'll press next and then finish and then I'll go ahead and save the package. Uh, from here we can go to my source files which was C, program files, scalable, packages, and here's our Hello World, here's our Hello World MSI. I can double click that and we'll give this a second to run. And then there is our Hello World custom action launching. I can hit OK and the install will complete. For my last example, I want to show you how to kick off a silent install of an application. This can be used as an alternative to actually repackaging the application. Uh, to do this, we can go back to the welcome screen and just as we did with our VBS file, create a new package. Uh, from here we'll say next. The application that I actually want to install is uh, Microsoft.net. Here's our output folder. We'll press next and then we'll go ahead and leave this as a default as well. 32-bit is fine. Uh, the MSI schema version of 4.5 is fine as well. Uh, we'll press next again and then uh, just like with the VBS example, I want to add this to the editor page and then open the package for modification. From here, I want to go back down to my custom action and I want to add in my installer for uh, Microsoft.NET 4.5. I'll click on add run it in executable, press next, it's going to be an installed file with a new package file just like our VBS example and our installer is right here Microsoft.NET 4.51 both 32-bit and 64-bit uh, supported. I'll hit open and I'll select our temporary folder just like we did with our VBS I'll press OK here and for my additional parameters I'll just add in what makes the install silent. In this case it is forward slash passive. I can press next again and finish and then once I save that I will have a, an MSI that will not actually repackage Microsoft.net instead just extract it to the temporary directory and then launch it with a slash passive option from the temporary directory. Okay, at this point uh, we should understand what custom actions are, how to configure post install custom actions to do things like activate software, how to launch or call a VBS or PowerShell script, and even how to alternatively than packaging up an application, how to launch a silent install. And the example we used was the Microsoft.net with the passive command. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, online tutorial. Uh, please visit scalablesmartpackager.com and you can reach us at 512-501-2828. Thanks again.